action? What action? Come on, you can do better than that. You're a man, remember? Big balls between your legs? Okay, here we go. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst action movies. We're in a bad way, old buddy. I can sure use your help. For this list, we cast our eye over flicks that were intended to be good blockbuster action hits, but that didn't even end up meeting our and most others' expectations. You missed! Interesting choice, man. <laughs> We're excluding those films that are intentionally awful in that so bad they're good type of way. But who are you to judge what's best for us? Number 10. A Good Day to Die Hard. He's still my kid. This utterly unnecessary fifth installment of the Die Hard franchise sees John McClane team up with his estranged son Jack to stop a generic Russian villain from seizing uranium for a by-the-book revenge plot. I want to wake up in a city that never sleeps. Yeah, that's it. Arguably the worst Die Hard film entry, the script and story are uninspired at best, as Bruce Willis's character feels desperately out of place in a 21st century setting. Gonna shoot your own father? By now, we know that McLean is indestructible, but the suspension of disbelief is pushed to the max in some ludicrous action sequences. Why all this trouble for just one guy? Number nine, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. <laughs> wow. The follow-up to Michael Bay's first live-action Transformers was somehow another box office smash. I'm so excited! Hey, I'm not taking you with me. This time, Sam Witwicky and the Autobots have to stop an ancient Decepticon from destroying the sun. Optimus! With typical Bayisms throughout this two hour plus monstrosity, it's a loud, disorienting mess riddled with offensive stereotypes and no human elements whatsoever. He got so <laughs> Whoa! Who's your daddy now, huh? It's almost all CGI, and it began to set the tone for the equally gratuitous movies that followed. Why audiences keep flocking to see this franchise remains an enduring mystery. Because this, this is over. Number eight, Bangkok Dangerous. Purpose of your visit to Bangkok, Mr. Winston? Holiday. A remake of a far superior Thai film from 1999. This crime thriller sees Nick Cage playing a contract killer who betrays his own set of morals by beginning to care for a couple of locals he comes in contact with. Do the police know who you are? <sighs> No one knows who I am. Cage isn't as brilliantly unhinged in this one. Instead, he and the rest of the cast turn in wooden performances in a woefully slow-paced film. Whatever happens in Bangkok stays in Bangkok. Which is completely in contrast to what the action flicks title might have led you to expect from the critical and box office bomb. <sighs> Number seven, Triple X State of the Union. The new Triple X has got to be more dangerous, deadlier, more attitude more attitude. Known as the next level outside North America, the sequel to Triple X replaced Vin Diesel with Ice Cube and follows an implausible plot targeting the President of the United States. Well, who the hell am I? You're the new Triple X. Sound like a porno star. What happened to the old Triple X? He's dead. The first, likely benefiting from Diesel's popularity from The Fast and the Furious, was a box office hit, whereas this one lost over $40 million. <laughs> You sure we got the right guy? And you can see why. Ice Cube is a flabbier, unfeasible action hero, while the cool, real stunts from the first were replaced with CGI heavy action. Diesel is apparently returning for a third film, though we're not too sure if anyone is really that excited for that. Sir, I've got some ideas for the next Triple X. Whoa, I think it's my turn to choose now. Number six, Far Cry. Thanks. Based on the video game of the same name, this action disaster follows a group of mercenaries trying to survive on an island ravaged by mutants. Being cannon fodder for the mutants was never part of the deal, and there's been a lot of us dying lately. Director Uva Boll has a track record for this degree of awfulness, with Alone in the Dark and Blood Rain being two in a long line of flops. My companion is gone. I don't know what's become of him. It's unclear where the estimated $30 million budget has been spent, as the sci-fi flick completely butchered the video game's legacy. You can't imagine how much money the government's paying for research like that. It made less than $1 million back, and to this day, no one knows why Bowl is ever trusted with any movie property. With some more time and some you more money. No more funding until you produce something that we can use. 
It should perhaps be emphasized that this movie is supposed to be set in a tropical paradise, yet they shot it up in Canada, which is a far cry from tropical, that's for sure. Anything that takes place outside on this island is a security matter that concerns me. Number five, abduction. My parents were just murdered, and I think the people who did it are after me too. Taylor Lautner plays an 18-year-old who finds out his past is not what he previously believed it to be and he soon becomes an unlikely target for Serbian terrorists. I know veteran agents who couldn't have handled what you've been through in the past 24 hours. Not knowing what sort of film it wants to be, Abduction gets caught in a limbo between a Bourne-style thriller and a tween Twilight-esque action movie. If you stay where you are, you're dead for sure. Lautner is pretty terrible himself, but the script does nothing to help him. It's funny. Perhaps only fans of the lead will find any enjoyment from this predictable action thriller that brings absolutely nothing new to the genre. Number 4. Batman and Robin Hey Freeze, the heat is on. In this superhero flick, Mr. Freeze wants to cover the world in ice, and Poison Ivy wants to repopulate it with mutant plants. Which doesn't quite make sense, especially as they're working together. I really am to die for. Nothing is particularly logical or good in this comic book adaptation that was clearly rushed to market, which makes us think of the not-so-great Catwoman movie of 2004. Come down from there, nice and easy. Cats come when they feel like it, not when they're told. George Clooney didn't seem like he wanted to be there as Batman, and being Robin nearly killed Chris O'Donnell's career. It's Batman and Robin, not Robin and Batman, and I'm sick of it. Nominated for a slew of Razzies, director Joel Schumacher has apologized for the film that will always be remembered for its inordinate amount of bad humor and, of course, bat nipples. Great stems, though. Buds, too. Yeah, those are nice. Number three, Speed 2, Cruise Control. What? You've got to be kidding me! This is a joke, right? Hey, the first film worked well, so let's do the exact same thing except on a boat. But all of a sudden I have love boat fever, it feels really good. A terrible plan, and the film's quality reflects as much. Somehow contriving to make a high-speed thriller on a cruise liner boring, it seems that without Keanu Reeves, the franchise is doomed. Well, don't quite know how to respond to that. Featuring on numerous worst sequel lists, the action is painfully obvious and dumps all over the relationship Reeves and Sandra Bullock forged in the first installment. You know the one on freestyle, don't you? <laughs> we never thought that a scene in which a ship crashes into a town could be so dull, but Speed 2 made us believe it. Number 2. Ultraviolet Okay, let's start simple. Featuring the hardest leading name to remember in film, this action sci-fi flick follows Violet Song Jat Sharif as she fights to protect those infected with a disease that causes vampire-like symptoms from a government intent on wiping them out. Seal the building. Any other phages inside, I want them hunted down and killed. Violet Song Jat Sharif. Heavily edited to become a PG-13 movie, it is totally incomprehensible failing in every facet that would make a reasonable action film. What do you think you're doing, huh? You're trying to get yourself killed? The unlucky Mila Jovovich is caught up in another dystopian future, and she's probably as sick of it as we are. Before our top pick angers critics around the world, here are a few dishonorable mentions. You think this is a joke? Because if you think it's a joke, I'll stick you right back into the cells where I found you. I should bust your ass for what you did to Sparky. Bust my ass? Number one, Ballistic X versus Sever. You're my ex? No, sorry. Recording an astonishing 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, this rival agents turned friends flick was a shambles on every single level. Most painfully for those who invested in the film, as it recorded an over $50 million loss at the box office. My money pegs are as disaffected DIA. Being generous, the story is incoherent, 
While the gratuitous explosions and brainless action are a lame attempt to distract from the lack of plot or wit. One big happy family, right, Sever? Comfortably one of the worst films of any genre, please do not waste your time with this car crash of a movie. Do you agree with our list? You're never gonna trust me! What action movie can you not stand to sit through? Do you understand anything I'm saying to you? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Yeah, we're done. We're done. We should just go home. Thank you.